See, every government has choices. And after a lost decade under federal conservative rule, our government chose a different path. The business environment. I always say, you cannot tax your way to prosperity. It's never worked anywhere in the world. It doesn't work anywhere here. And we're going to make sure that we're still competitive, creating the environment for the people of Ontario to thrive and prosper and grow. Because of the... Uh, it's also great to be joined once again by Premier Ford, Doug. Always good to be making an announcement with you uh, and Vic Fideli and uh, the broader team. Uh, also want to recognize the, uh, the Chief of the Mohawks of the Bay of Quinte, uh, Chief Maracle. Thank you so much, Chief, uh, for being here today. Mayor Terry Richardson, Reeve John Weiss, so you guys are uh, great to have you here. Thank you for welcoming us to this beautiful community. But I have to say, um, we're not here today because of a federal government investment. We're not here today because of a provincial government investment. We're not here because of uh, the work that Goodyear has done uh, around here. We are here because of one group of people, specifically and only. And it's all of you associates. Back to the announcement of today. For decades, the auto sector has been one of the drivers of the Canadian economy. The sector automobile is one of the most important sources of exportation. It's a source of exports. Last year, we added 18 billion to the GDP through this industry. Community building work for Canadians, for over half a million Canadians from coast to coast to coast. And yet, when we took over from the Conservative government, this sector was in decline. Jobs were fleeing abroad. Companies were choosing to invest elsewhere. That was not inevitable. That was not just how the world is going, and we are proof of that here today. See, every government has choices. And after a lost decade under federal conservative rule, our government chose a different path. And invest in the future of the industry. And the results, the results speak for themselves. In just the last four years, we've attracted over $46 billion worth of investments across the EV supply chain from mines to assembly lines. Rio Tinto, General Motors, Northvolk, Volkswagen, Honda, and so many more. These global leaders have recognized all that Canada and Canadians have to offer. Abundant clean energy and a commitment to serious climate action, access to critical minerals and other natural resources, stable and reliable democratic institutions, strong trade relationships spanning every corner of the globe, and most importantly, the best workers in the world. As I'm out making a pitch for Canada internationally, Yes, we talk about our resources. We talk about having more trade deals than just about anyone else. We're the only G7 economy with a free trade deal with every other G7 economy. But our single greatest competitive advantage is Canadians themselves. Companies from around the world are trying to connect with the reliable, educated, ambitious, serious workforce that we have right across the country. That's why companies like Goodyear, who have places all around the world, say, yeah, you know what? We're doubling down on our investments in Canada. We know that Canadians will deliver in this changing world. We're the reliable bet. That's why we've seen foreign direct investment massively spike over the past years. As companies are coming to invest in Canada, it's because of all of you. So keep it up. The future is in good hands. See, when we present these lists of facts to global investors, their choice ends up being simple. They choose Canada, they choose Canadians. And today, yet another global leader is doing exactly the same. With support from the Government of Canada, Goodyear is expanding and modernizing this facility to produce tires specially made for electric vehicles. Goodyear's more than $575 million investment will create and maintain hundreds of good-paying, sustainable jobs right here in Napanee, 
all while ensuring they reach net zero by 2040. And on top of that, they're investing back in Canadian research and development so that Canada remains a global EV leader for decades to come. Today, Goodyear is like countless other auto leaders putting its faith in Canadian workers. They know that Canada is the place to invest, to lead the global energy transformation. And that's why they're stepping up and doing their part in building a strong, resilient economy here in Canada, now and for decades to come. Because that's what this announcement is all about. It's not just about you know, making a few more tires here, although two million more tires is a very good thing. It's about the jobs that Goodyear is going to be relying on and that folks in these communities can rely on. I spoke with Hannah earlier, she's down on the end there in the red. She's a second generation worker here at Goodyear. There are young people here who are third generation, whose parents and grandparents were part of this plant going back to the late 80s. This investment, at a time where people are worried that the global competition for jobs is increasing, this investment, this confidence in Canada and in Canadians, means there's not just going to be a fourth generation of tire workers here in Goodyear, in Napanee. It means there's going to be a fifth and sixth and seventh generation. It means people are going to be building things here in Canada that are adjusted to the way the world needs. The world's changing with EVs. So making tires for electric vehicles. By the way, why do we need electric vehicle tires that are different? Well, electric vehicles are heavier. They have more torque, so they need, have more resistance in the wheels. And they need to be quieter when the loudest thing on a car is not the engine, but the tires. The kind of innovation that Goodyear is doing is more and more important. And when a company is looking for how it's going to play a solid role for coming decades, they're looking for safe, solid investments to make in places like Canada, in workers like Canadian workers. So once again, today's announcement proves what our government has said for a long time. The good, responsible climate policy is good, responsible economic policy. Indeed, you can't have a plan for the future of our economy if you don't have a plan to fight climate change. And look, we all know full well that the Conservative Party of Canada has no plan to fight climate change. But it's also increasingly obvious that they have no plan for the economy either. Pierre Polyev has been clear. He will cut these investments in Canada's future and cut jobs for Canadian workers because he won't invest in workers and in the future. See, every government, every leader has choices. We've chosen to invest in Canadians, invest in workers, invest in our future. Polyev has chosen to write off Canada's auto sector, to let good middle-class jobs disappear, and to let down Canadian workers. Well, our government will never let that happen. Countries invest in themselves and in their workers. That's the choice we will always make. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Well, first of all, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Laura, for that introduction. And I'm thrilled to be back here in the beautiful Greater Napanee alongside my champion of all champs, the number one salesperson, Vic Fidelli. I know he travels around the world and attracting companies, and, and also the local champion, Rick Rossi. And Prime Minister, I want to thank you and Minister Ng on your entire, and your entire team, as well as Chief Maracle. Chief, I know we were talking on the phone last week, and uh, great to see you, Mayor Richardson, Warden Wise, and the County of Lennox and Addington. Today's announcement is another great example of all levels of government, of everyone coming together to support local businesses and workers, and to help create better jobs and bigger paychecks. I also want to thank Mark and everyone from Goodyear for hosting us today. I want to thank your associates, as I always tell Vic, our number one selling feature anywhere in the world are the people of Ontario. I'll put our folks against anyone anywhere in the world. We have the best of the best 
and great seeing everyone, and let's keep going. Goodyear has been a huge part of our province's auto industry for over a century. We've been so proud to have you as a partner and a team member of Team Ontario, employing thousands of hardworking people, supporting so many families, and becoming rooted in the communities you operate in. Thank you. Today's announcement marks another big milestone in Goodyear's ongoing success in Ontario. The company's more than $575 million investment, which is supported by a $20 million investment from the province, will modernize and expand this facility here in Napanee to significantly scale our province's production of tires for electric and all-terrain vehicles. Once built and operational, this new expanded plant will employ more than 1,000 people and be a huge boost to our province's growing auto and EV industry. That's because here in Ontario, we're building an end-to-end -end EV supply chain, connecting our critical minerals in the north and clean steel manufacturers in Hamilton and Sault Ste. Marie, to automakers and parts and battery manufacturers across the province. And I'm so excited about the progress we're making. Over the past four years, Ontario has attracted more than $43 billion in electric vehicle and battery investments. We've welcomed new battery plants in Windsor, Alston, and St. Thomas. Major investments from parts and component producers in Loyalist Township, Brantford, Port Colborne, and now in Napanee. And we're so proud that Ontario is now the only place in North America that has the six largest automakers call home. And friends, the world is taking notice. You know, we have become, Ontario, an economic powerhouse in North America. If we were a standalone country, and I never recommend that, Prime Minister, but if we were a standalone country, we'd be the U.S.'s third largest trading partner in the world. We, we do $500 billion of two-way trade with the U.S., we're the number one customer to 17 states, number two to 13 states. So the world is watching. And again, the, the best asset we have are the people. Earlier this year, Canada surpassed China in Bloomberg's global battery supply chain rankings. This is the first time ever China has been unseated from the top spot. Companies are investing in Ontario because of this growing supply chain, because of the people. They're choosing Ontario because of the investments we're making in skills training, in energy infrastructure, and to build roads and highways. We're investing over $190 billion. Nowhere in North America can say that. $190 billion in roads, in highways, in bridges, in hospitals, in schools, and every other infrastructure, and broadband as well. And uh, we just uh, are going to keep moving forward on this. International companies are setting up shop here, and local companies are expanding because of our competitive business environment. I always say, you cannot tax your way to prosperity. It's never worked anywhere in the world. It doesn't work anywhere here. And we're going to make sure that we're still competitive, creating the environment for the people of Ontario to thrive and prosper and grow. Because of the work our government has done to cut red tape by over a billion dollars a year, to reduce these costs of doing business by eight billion dollars each and every single year, and for, not, and for cutting, not raising taxes on the people or businesses. We're the only government in the country that has never raised a tax since we've been in office. We will never raise a tax. We will see revenues grow by expanding companies like this and the $43 billion of EV expansion, $20 billion in, in tech, $3 billion in life sciences. And just think, last year, think of this stat here. I love this stat. So last year, the manufacturing of this province, folks like yourself, created more manufacturing jobs here in Ontario than all 50 U.S. states combined. Think of that. That's pretty staggering. And that's never been done before, but I'm going to be very frank. They're catching up to us, so we just got to keep going. It's 50 against one, but we'll still hold our own. And folks, as the world continues to face economic and geopolitical uncertainty, 
here in Ontario, we're going to keep working hard to create the environment for businesses like Goodyear to thrive, prosper, and grow. And when companies thrive, prosper, and grow, so do their associates thrive, prosper, and grow. I have a very simple theory. You have two choices. Either put money back into the people's pocket, and they're going to be doing things they might otherwise not be able to do, as simple as going out for dinner, buying something that they might, might not be able to buy. The best place to do is put it in your pocket. The worst place to do is give your money to the government. Then when it comes to companies, same thing. You put money back into the company's pockets, they're going to invest in their people, into their infrastructure, into their technology, and that's how we thrive. We're going to keep the momentum going here in Ontario, attracting more EV and auto investments, and creating better jobs and bigger paychecks in every part of our province. Once again, I want to thank you, Goodyear, all your associates, Mark and Laura and your whole team, for your investments and for your continued confidence in our province and our workers. Thank you to everyone for joining us today, and may God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you so much. With plotting the terror attack in Toronto, uh, came to Canada from abroad. Uh, and became a Canadian citizen after uh, allegedly appearing in an ISIS video dismembering a prisoner. Uh, can you tell us when and how he came to Canada? This is obviously a very serious situation that the Minister of Public Safety is ensuring there are uh, a full follow-up and understanding on exactly how this happened. I know uh, investigations are ongoing and the Minister will share uh, all, that, all that we learned uh, in the appropriate moment. But uh, we're taking this extremely seriously uh, because Canadians need to have confidence in our immigration system and on the uh, millions of people who've come here over, over the past years uh, to build a better life for themselves and their future. We need to make sure Everything is done to keep Canadians safe. Is the issue that you are not sure as to how this person came to Canada or just not willing to share at this point what you know? We are uh, proceeding in a proper and thorough investigation on exactly how this happened, and we will share with Canadians at the appropriate moment. Thank you. Next question. Canadians should not be traveling to Lebanon. We've had that travel advisory up for many weeks now, and any Canadians there in Lebanon should be coming home. We see that the risk of ex escalation is real. Uh, the challenges in the region are significant. We are making certain preparations to be able to support in the event uh, that everything uh, gets much, much worse. But. The situation is so difficult that we may not be able to get all Canadians out. That's why while the airports are still open, while there is an opportunity, we're encouraging and asking all Canadians to please uh, leave Lebanon uh, while, uh, while there are commercial routes available. Next question. Thanks. Hi, Prime Minister. Since June's by-election loss in Toronto, many in your caucus have called for change, whether that's to party leadership or to your senior staff or perhaps the caucus. Uh, you've had some time to think about this uh, for the last six weeks, presumably. Can you tell me whether you're planning on implementing any changes that your caucus is looking for? Well, one of the things that we've been focused on, not just over the past few weeks, but over the past many years, uh, is making, f making sure we're investing in Canadians. This announcement today is a great example of how, uh, from local MPs to ministers, we've all been working together to build a strong economy for the future at a time where Canadians are rightly concerned about this. And the, cons the conversations I have uh, with members of my team uh, leave me more optimistic and more focused than ever on fighting for Canadians every step of the way. We're going to continue to make sure that we're putting Canadians first in everything we do. Uh, that's the conversations I've had and that's the commitment I've made to Canadians. It's Commissioner, as a, as a breath of fresh air, and I now understand he has agreed to resign. Um, he's just issued a statement uh, talking about believing in the Commission's work, mandate, importance to democracy. Um, what happened here? Why did he resign? What does the report say about him? Um, what was he, in fact, uh, doing, doing what he was accused of doing by various uh, Jewish human rights advocacy groups? First of all, it's really important to get the right people in the right jobs. And I know the Minister of uh, Justice will be holding a press avail to talk more about this situation uh, in the coming hours. Next question. Hi, Prime Minister. I'm Michelle from the Kingstonist News. Um, Umocor recently put their Stone Mills factory build on hold, and we we're wondering what will happen to the government funds that were set aside for that project. 
First of all, we know how important it is to be investing in the future. EV, uh, the EV supply chain is something that uh, this government, alongside the government of Ontario, have made real a real bet on a real investment since. We know it's a new area of technology, new markets to develop. There are always going to be certain challenges. But we know that investing in Ontarians and Canadians and in the future is the right thing to do. Uh, in terms of uh, specific companies making the right decisions, making decisions that are right for them. We'll continue to be there to work with them, but we're making sure that our investments go towards delivering good jobs and a good future for communities right across the country. Uh, and, and I can tell you that the, the money is still there for Umacor. None of it has been spent yet uh, or invested in them, and we're looking forward to continuing to work with them, as I know the province is as well. Hello, Mr. Prime Minister. My question is also kind of related to Omicor. Uh, you know about their announcement last month. Uh, and also, you know that the Ford Assembly plant uh, was planning to, uh, to start building, producing uh, electric SUVs in 2026. Instead, now they have said that they will start producing uh, gas-powered uh, trucks. Uh, we know that Canada, the, the federal government, and also the provinces have announced uh, have pledged around 50 billion of dollars investment in the EV supply chain. Recently, some concerns have been raised. Maybe Canada jumped into the market sooner than it should have. What is your thoughts on that? Canada has made the strategic decision to be in a leader in EV supply chains. We have the critical minerals. We have the innovation, we have the manufacturing, mostly we have the workers uh, that are drawing in investments from around the world. This is a nascent technology, a nascent industry. There are going to be challenges along the way. But knowing that Canada is, has positioned itself as number one in the world in EV supply chains, according to Bloomberg, as the place to invest, uh, has shown that we are making the right bet on the future. We know that climate change is real. We know that electric vehicles are going to be essential for the future. And the choices that we've made as a government has ensured that Canada will be part of it. I know there's uh, a lot of people who wouldn't have made that choice. The Conservative Party of Canada has said very clearly it would not have made this choice of investing in EVs, investing in workers. But the reality is, as a great Canadian once said, you need to go where the puck is going. The global economy is going towards net zero. Manufacturing is going towards electric vehicles. And with great partnership from the government of Ontario, Canada has positioned itself to be a leader in the EV industry. And we will continue to be because those are where the jobs are going to be not just a couple of years from now, but a decade from now, a generation from now, and over the coming decades. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, my next question is about uh, Venezuela. We know that Canada has expressed uh, concerns about the election results out there, but my question is that why Canada has not joined the United States to declare that President Maduro did not win the elections, and why Canada has not imposed any sanctions on, on uh, Maduro yet? Oh. Canada has been one of the strongest countries in standing up uh, over the past many years against the Maduro regime. Uh, we uh, have, as you said, huge questions uh, about those election results. We're calling on the international community uh, to come together and demand uh, a proper accountability. It is essential that the will of the people be respected and we will continue to work not just as northern countries but with uh, countries in the global south, particularly across South America, to demand accountability, transparency, and to ensure that democracy returns uh, to Venezuela for Venezuelans. Premier and the Prime Minister, uh, Ottawa Mayor, the Ottawa Mayor has says the uh, city is facing a public transit financial crisis, and they're asking for up to $140 million from both upper levels of government. Uh, so are you prepared to bail out the city in this situation? Uh, first of all, uh, it is really important as a federal government that we have good relations with uh, municipal leaders, cities right across the country, and that's why uh, I sat down with Mayor Sutcliffe just in Ontario uh, in April uh, in, at City Hall. 
uh, and we talked directly and frankly about some of the challenges that uh, the city is facing. Uh, the federal government will always uh, look to be a partner of municipalities as we move forward, particularly a municipality that's uh, so geographically important to uh, the federal government as Ottawa. Uh, we look forward to continuing to work with Mark. Well, we have a great relationship with Mayor Sutcliffe and uh, made a new deal with him. But, uh, you know, we're in. If the federal government's in, they're the largest employer in the region. So I'll leave it at that. We'll, we'll talk to Mayor Sutcliffe and work with the federal government. Thank you. And my follow-up is just for the Prime Minister. Uh, last week, steel and aluminum CEOs and opposition leader Pierre Polyev called for the federal government to match the U.S.'s tariffs on China. Why has Canada not moved on this yet? Well, first of all, it's a bit of a joke that Polyev is uh, suddenly talking about workers in the auto industry. He has said repeatedly that he wouldn't be making these investments in our auto industry. He wouldn't have invested. He'd be cutting our investments in EVs in building an extraordinary EV supply chain in Canada, something that we've been doing as a government in, partners, uh, in partnership with the government of Ontario and others right, ac and right across the country over the past four years in a deliberate strategy. Bring in Volkswagen, bring in Stellantis, invest in Honda, invest uh, in the EV supply chain from mines uh, to manufacturing and recycling. We have been there every step of the way, and the federal Conservatives continue to say they cut it all. They don't support it. They don't believe in investing in Canadian workers. So him to suddenly turn around and say, oh, we're worried about EVs, that's baloney. He's looking for a political angle because that's all he does. But in regards to the CEOs uh, and the steel manufacturers and the partners in the industry, I can tell you, for the past many months, we, alongside uh, Minister Mary Ng, our Minister of Trade, have been working with stakeholders, working uh, with community groups, working with international partners on making sure that Canada's EV advantage remains. Canadians have invested in this future and we're going to make sure that we follow through on it. So probably of jumping in front of the parade or trying to is just silly. We have stood up for Canadian workers in the auto sector. We will continue to stand up for Canadian workers in the auto sector. We will continue to make sure that we're using all necessary tools to drive a greener, cleaner economy, which means great manufacturing jobs here in Canada, more opportunities for Canadians. This is a conversation that we've been having for months and we will continue to have to make sure these investments we're making that Polyev would cut are well protected for the future. Thank you, Prime Minister.